diverse food cultures in the world. So it hasn't been explored and discovered in the same way, say, French, Italian, Spanish, Chinese, or even Thai cooking. Today, I'm talking to New York City chefs and hospitality professionals about what makes this food so rich and complex. Then, we're going to prep some food and get everyone together for a cookout in Brooklyn to taste these classic yet very unique dishes. Omar Rodriguez, New Yorker. Peruvian food holds a special place in my heart. It's a memory and it's there and I connect with those memories through food and it's really cool, it's really special. My name is Lizzie Asher. I'm the president of Machu Pisco and I'm originally from Lima, Peru. I'm Carlos Landazuri, born and raised in Lima. I've been cooking for about 17 years probably. My name is Eamon Rocky. I'm the general manager at Betney. The first time I discovered Peruvian food, everything was reminiscent of something I had before but not really, it was close, but not the same, and then together it created something new. Mi nombre es Charles Thompson, eh, nací en Lima, Perú, hace 34 años, así que, y hace 10 vivo acá en Nueva York. Estudié cocina después de estudiar leyes en Perú. Uh, my name is Eric Ramirez. I've been cooking for about 13, 14 years. Both of my parents are from Peru. I'm first generation American. My mom cooked a lot, so did my grandmother. I think Peru is kind of like New York City all these different types of food and all these different types of people. All these microclimates, all this biodiversity, and because of that, you can find like an ingredient from like, the northern coast of Peru that you won't find in the desert or in the Amazon or in the Andes. And then you have all the cultural influences, the Chinese, the Japanese, the African, the Spanish, the indigenous, you know, even German and Italian. So all like this mixed together, the result is, is this amazing, beautiful cuisine. We're headed out to Brooklyn to watch Chef Omar prep a classic Peruvian dish called Anticuchos. So the first Peruvian dish I can ever remember eating was Anticuchos, these beautiful little pieces of veal heart, uh, skewered, marinated. It just incites uh, an emotion, it, you know, it makes you excited. First, we gotta start with the chilies. We gotta clean them. It's a hiponka, it's a red chili. It's dried and uh, we gotta de-seat them, clean them. Then we're gonna toast them, kinda get the oils out, get the aromas going. And then we're gonna steep it in some hot water to soften them up. And then we're gonna puree it and make a paste out of that. And then with that paste, we're gonna make the marinade, which has garlic, cumin, black pepper, vinegar, and that's what gets rubbed on the meat. And then we're going to clean some veal hard and cut it down and then marinate it and then skewer it and then let it sit for a day and it'll be ready for tomorrow. My sister Melanie founded Machu Pisco. It's been her long life dream. My dad had been her right hand person, kind of her partner in crime, and uh, really our biggest cheerleader our whole life. And when he passed away, it was a really difficult time for her. And the company was growing, and I was working in law, and I just had a choice either pursue this dream with her, and now I'm so glad I did. And, you know, we keep something alive of our dad by keeping the company going. I actually call Pisco the liquid soul of Peru. Pisco is a white spirit made from grapes. That's the most basic explanation as to what it is. It is a grape brandy. So it's a distillate that is made immediately following harvest. We have very strict laws that govern production of Pisco because we have a denomination of origin. We basically use Pisco for the base of our cocktailing. When you drink Pisco, you're tasting fruit, and, and that's what's so cool about it. Pisco purists would say that you have to have Pisco made from the Quebranta grape, uh, the original grape. It's a series of about a dozen or so uh, varietals that you know range from aromatic to non-aromatic. They make very clean and very pure distillates that are dependent entirely on the quality of the fruit and of the land. And if you don't have good one or the other, you don't have good Pisco. The classic way to make Pisco sour is to use two parts of Pisco Quebranta, one part of gum arabic syrup, one part of fresh lime juice, and one egg white. Uh, we shake that in a tin uh, with a couple of pieces of ice to whip it. It results in a really frothy, light, and well-integrated cocktail. Uh, it also helps to break down the pieces of, of egg white or albumin to ensure that they're properly dispersed throughout the drink. You shake the heck out of it and then you strain it not only through a Hawthorne strainer or a classic strainer, but also through a mesh strainer too to catch any pieces of ice.
for an authentic taste of Peru, we're headed to Rockaway Beach, where the Urala sisters serve some of the freshest ceviche in New York. My name is Leila, and me and my sister, we own La Cevicheria at Rockaway Beach. We opened up about two years ago. I think the main ingredient, or the most important one, is the freshness of the fish. We work with local fishermen, so your fish was swimming a few hours ago. <laughs> we also have quinoa salad and causa. It's a Peruvian yellow potato. The potato is smashed, it's served cold. It's seasoned with salt, lime, pepper, and you can put any topping that you want. The ceviche is so light, so fantastic. It's totally worth the trip out to Rockaway Beach. El ceviche es el plato bandera del Perú y es algo que, que inmediatamente me hace recordar a, a mi abuela preparando ceviche con pescado fresco en casa. En Ecuador, en Chile, en Colombia, you can find the ceviche, but the home of the ceviche is really in Peru and it's really special to us because we have incredible richness in terms of the diversity of the fish that we get. My mother is a very particular ceviche eater. Ceviche is her lunchtime go-to dish. For her, to eat ceviche at night, that's past its prime. That's not something you would do. We're gonna do a classic ceviche. They call uh, seafood ceviche, ceviche misto. We're gonna start with a little bit of fish. I always put some salt. It's very good to cure. So you let it sit for a little while and make it nice. And then make it tasty. What we got here is leche de tigre. Mm. It's basically um, lime juice, celery, Rocoto, garlic, cilantro. It's very simple, nice and clean. It's gonna make all this dish combined together. All right? I'm gonna put some shrimp. All right? I'm gonna put some octopus. The octopus is in braised, like my grandmother used to do. I got some rocoto, rocoto, which is a, it's a spicy Peruvian paste. I'm gonna put a lot because I love it. So I'm gonna beat a little bit cremosity. The whole gang is rounded up to share some classic Peruvian dishes with our guests. So you want a little spiciness? You cut this in a cross. And you just go all the way in. And you just mush it so you get the flavor. You get the oils and the essence. The justice? Yeah. We're gonna put some red onions. What I do with the red onions is I, I shave it in such a way like people normally do julienne, you know? But julienne doesn't exist in Peru because julienne is a girlfriend of my father or somebody else. Amazing. Peruvian food is so unique, I think, because of its unabashed sort of communion in the things that make it up from different cultures, and, and as it evolves over time, it's not afraid of being mom and pop and rustic. It's also capable of being one of the most refined cuisines in the world. We are innately fusion, and we are so much so the original fusion food. Nobody really uses the word fusion to describe it. We're just Peruvian food. Yo creo que recién se inicia un boom gastronómico peruano en Nueva York ahora. Yo creo que de aquí a 10 años o a 20 años vamos a ver un cambio maravilloso. Van a, yo me imagino mi, mi proyecto que cada vez van a haber más restaurantes peruanos y pienso que lo mismo que ocurrió con la cocina japonesa en Nueva York en los años 70 y 80 puede ocurrir en los próximos 10 años con la cocina peruana. Thanks for joining us. Check back for more traditional recipes and stories from New York City chefs and home cooks from all over the world. <laughs>